أحمده وأصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد So today, inshallah, I want to talk about the dog in Surah Al-Kahf. The very strange dog. And today I'm in the mood, because I'm relatively tired, so I'm in the mood to talk about something that's a little bit more light-hearted, you can say. And for that reason, I want to talk about the dog in Surah Al-Kahf. And what do I want to say about him? I want to ask you, that why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention him? There are many reasons why Allah mentions him. For example, in the end of times, in Akhiru Zaman, you might need a powerful dog to protect you from people. Especially this type of dog that has been described. But I want to come to this subject from a different perspective today. Something a little bit very serious, but a little bit more lighthearted. What is so special about this dog? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions him. وَكَلْبُهُمْ And their dog. And not only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions him, but Allah mentions how he's sitting in front of the cave. Not only does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention him sitting in front of the cave, but then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to mention him Again in ayah number 22, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, بَعْدَ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ He says, سَيَقُولُ ثَلَاثَةٌ أُرَابِيُمْ كَلْبُهُمْ And there were three and the fourth was their dog. وَيَقُولُونَ And they say, and some of the people say, خَمْسَةٌ وَسَادِسُهُمْ كَلْبُهُمْ And they say there were five, and the sixth was the dog. رَجْمًا بِالْغَيْبِ and they're throwing darts in the unknown. They're just trying to guess. Then Allah continues. وَيَقُولُنَا سَبْعَةٌ وَثَامِنُهُمْ كَلْبُهُمْ There were seven and the eighth was the dog. Now I ask you, what is the purpose of mentioning the dog over and over again? There were three and the fourth was the dog. And there were some say there were five and the sixth was the dog. And some they say there were seven and the eighth was the dog. Why not just say that there were three and some say the fourth was the dog and others say that they were five and others say that they were seven. You don't have to mention the dog over and over again, but yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the dog in Surah Al-Kahf over and over. And not only as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the dog over and over, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes how he's sitting. So for something that is referred to so much, something that is referred to so much, meaning how many times does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refer to Musa or Khidr or Zulqarnain or the Ashabul Kahf themselves in the surah? How many times does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention them? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this dog, pointing out to this dog more than any of them. Can you tell me what may be the reason for this? What is the reason for this special attention by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And sometimes... <clears throat> and the Qur'an does this many, many times, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you a parable, an example, a metaphor, an event, like you find here. And then when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concludes that event, or that parable, or that metaphor, or that example, then Allah will continue to mention the point of that parable in the ayat that come right after that parable or event is mentioned. <coughs> but before I go there, let me share with you what Imam Qurtubi says <coughs> in his tafsir. Okay, one of the first tafsirs. And he says, 
<coughs> and before I come to the words, let me give you the context. So the those people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described, that they were people who had ribat in their hearts for Allah. They had rabita. And we increased them in guidance. And we caused strength in their hearts when they stood up for the truth. <coughs> then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, So these young men of fatua, of real manliness, of bravery, and these people who were the friends of Allah, <coughs> When they left the city, now they're going. And a dog is following them. If a dog is following them, for that, for them, that could be a security risk. Why? Because if the dog starts barking, the people will hear the bark in the city and they will be caught. So they were trying to throw stones at this dog to make him go away. Imam Qurtubi writes, and perhaps this explains why Allah mentions him over and over again. <coughs> he says, قَالَ كَعَبْ مَرُّ بِالْقَلْبِ And then, فَنَيَاهَ لَهُمْ فَتَرَدُّوهُ فَعَادَ فَتَرَدُّوهُ مِرَارًا So they would throw stones on him and the dog would be persistent. He would keep coming back. He would not leave them. The dog is more loyal than human beings are in this age of postmodernity. <coughs> so this dog st stood up on his two feet. Over his two feet. And he raised his, the, the, so he's on his two feet and his other two paws, he raises his paws like he does dua. Okay. Like the one who's calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he raises it. And what does he say? فَقَالْ لَا تَخَافُوا مِنِّي Don't be fearful of me. أَنَا أُحِبُّ أَحِبَّا إِلَّهِ تَعَالَى I love those who love Allah's Allah. I love those who love Allah. Here's a dog. Who loves the people who love Allah. فَنَامُوا حَتَّى أَحْرَسُكُمْ So go to sleep till I will be your guardian. <coughs> so here's a dog who loves the people of Allah. So expect in the postmodern world that the animals will love the believers. Just like that tree will speak, say, O oh Muslim, come over here. <coughs> Just like when the stone will speak and say, O oh Muslim, come over here. When the Muslims finally stand up for the truth, they will be in a position to see miracles. And they will be in a position to see strange things not because they're prophets, but because they're those who love Allah and who left the city life because of their love of Allah and the deen and because of their love for the Prophet wasallam. Those people who love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will see many strange things. But the other lesson here is that look at this dog. <coughs> He loved the people of Allah. He served the people of Allah. He protected the people of Allah. A dog. 
And because of this, there are narrations that say he will be in Jannah, however weak they are. But one has to ponder over for sure that what is the wisdom in Allah mentioning this dog so much. That Allah mentions the dog, how he was sitting. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions how many people there were. And with and every time the people, the Ashabul Kahf were mentioned, that dog who had loyally served those people of Allah, Allah mentioned that dog every single time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيَقُولُونَ خَمْسَةٌ وَسَادِسُهُمْ كَلْبُهُمْ There were five, and the sixth was their dog. And وَيَقُولُونَ And some say, what uh, uh before that uh thalathatun wa rabium kalbuhum three and the fourth was the dog and then what uh the wa sab'un that there's seven wa thaminuhum kalbuhum and the eighth was the dog that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cared about the caring of that dog for the people of Allah so those people who care and do khidmah and serve and protect the people of Allah. Be they may be dogs in the sight of others. Or be may they be dogs. But they are dogs that love the people of Allah. They will also get a portion of something good. They they may not have been in the battlefield, but they may have been somebody who protected the man of Allah or the people of Allah. And <clears throat> the other way is true too. That because they were the people of Allah, this dog became important. But this dog became important according to this narration because why? They were pelting him, trying to drive him away. And according to one narration, he says, I'm not a dog that barks. I will not give you away. So when the day of judge, the postmodern world comes and the fitans come and the believers, they are, it is harder for them to hold on to Islam than the coals of fire. Don't be like a dog who barks and gives people away. Be like that dog that does not bark and does not give people away. And so, because of the loyalty of this dog, which is a quality Allah loves, as one of the saints of Islam, one of the scholars of Islam wrote, that how many dogs are better than human beings? And he enumerated the qualities of dogs that are better than human beings. Meaning in terms of his behavior, the behavior of the dog is better than human beings. But the problem with the dog is the tongue. It is najas. So if it eats on something, you have to wash it seven times, according to one of the narrations. Wash it good. Because the tongue carries parasites. You can look this up. People who get licked up by dogs, they lose their teeth, their gums. Look it up. So, the point here is Allah is looking at the positive aspect of this dog. And this dog manifested the most best qualities of the dog. His strength, the terror of looking at him, his loyalty, his Khidma to human beings, his khidma to the beloveds of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and <coughs> then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored even this dog and mentioned him in the Quran. And mentioned him more than any other figure in that surah. Now, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the dog I think four times directly, two times indirectly. Because when Allah was describing how he's sitting in front of the cave, Allah mentions two aspects about him. One, he's standing in front of the cave. And the second, that um, when the people saw him, they would run in terror. 
I think Musa alayhi salatu wasalam is mentioned two or three times. Zulqarnain is mentioned three times. So this dog is mentioned more. And there's a reason for that. But what I want to show with, show you now is that when this subject came to an end, in ayah number 28 is where this now, the whole subject of the seven sleepers, you can say, ends with ayah number 26. قُلِ اللَّهُ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا لَبِثُوا Say Allah knows best how long they stayed. And I think tomorrow my subject will be on time and still kahf for the people that are interested. Then Allah says, لَهُ غَيْبُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ For him are the unseen things of the heavens and the earth. أَبْسِرْ بِهِ وَأَسْمِعْ Okay, by him you see and hear. وَمَا لَهُمْ مِن دُونِهِ مِن وَلِيٍّ وَلَا يُشْرِكُ فِي حُكْمِهِ أَحَدًا And there is no wali nor guardian other than him and he shares no one in his kingship. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in ayah number 27 وَتْلُ مَا أُوْهِيَ إِلَيْكَ مِن كِتَابِ رَبِّكَ O Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recite what we have revealed to you from the book. لا مبدل لكلماته There's no changing the words of Allah. ولن تجد من دونه ملتحدا And you'll find no refuge other than Him. And so what is the word Allah has used most in this part of the Qur'an, in this passage? It is the dog. And the dog, what did He do? He gave them refuge. Ayah number 27. Then ayah number 28 is the first major comment after concluding this pair, this event that took place with the seven sleepers. What is that? Ayah number 28, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاسْبِرْ نَفْسَكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَالْعَشِي يُرِيدُونَ وَجْهَا وَاسْبِرْ نَفْسَكَ O Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Be patient with those. Be, have sabr with those. Hold yourself with those people who, who are like the Ashabul Kahf, those who are the beloveds of Allah. Who are they? Wasbir nafsaka ma'alladina yad'una rabbahum who call upon their Lord bil ghadati wal ashiyi in the morning and the evening. Yuriduna wajha seeking, primarily seeking his favor, his pleasure, his to be in his good books. Wala ta'du aynaka anhum. Don't turn your eyes to those who turidu zinatul hayatid dunya, those who want the glitter of this world. And don't follow the desires of the one whose heart we have closed from our remembrance. And he followed his desires, and as a result, his amr, his affair became confused. Don't pay attention to them, O Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You keep your gaze, you keep yourself, right? You keep your gaze on those that are remembering Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is what the Prophet was told Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so now what is the link between this story of the dog? And this command given to the Prophet ﷺ, and through the Prophet given to us. Wasbir, O Prophet, with those who remember Allah in the morning and the evenings. And wasbir, O Muslim, with those who are contented with Allah and remember Allah in the morning and the evenings. And don't turn yourself, don't pay attention to those who have the glitter of the world. The link between the story of the of the dog and this verse and this command and the only command in this surah given to the Muslims, the people is to focus on those who remember Allah in the morning and the evenings and the link between the two is that the dog came to protect those who were innahum fityatun amanu bi rabbihim wa zidnahum huda. They were young men of fatuwa, selfless people, who Allah sent them this dog to protect them while they sleep. And so, 
if you be of those who remember Allah in the morning and the evenings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will move the sun and the moon and the dogs and everything around you to protect you. When that time comes where it will be harder to hold on to a coal of fire, then that at that time, if you are true to Islam, the whole world will be, you will be seeing miracles, how the whole world will be protecting you at that time. And you will be of those people who when you remember Allah in the morning and the evenings, like these seven sleepers, you will also see miracles like they saw. And if you have a dog that is protecting you, and you are the ones remembering Allah, then that dog that is with you also becomes special. Just because he's with you. Just because Allah is pleased with you. And Allah is pleased with that dog that serves you. And so, as we enter into this age where dogs have better behavior than men, dogs behave more humanly than men, and then man has to say, dog is my best friend, because he can't trust anyone else around him. Then at that age, you have to be trying to be of those people who in that age of ultra-materialism, 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 in that age, you must try to be of those people who remember Allah, who read Qur'an every month, who read Qur'an constantly, who ponder upon Qur'an constantly. And so I will end here for today. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا أَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ وَلِسَائِرِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَالْمُسْلِمَاتِ Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.